Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. Today I have probably a bit of a long video for you guys. I took a poll or I posted a poll on my community page on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that button down below so that you don't miss out on those polls. You guys got to vote today to tell me what video you guys want to see from me. A lot of you guys wanted to see me repot some of my Hoyas and transfer them from LECA back into soil. There are some that I just want to see in soil. There's really no reason you guys are going to see that they're doing quite well in LECA, but there are some larger plants that are going to outgrow the vessels that I have them in quite quickly. So I thought that I would just switch that up and put them back into soil to make my life a little bit easier. You guys it didn't vote for this one. And I thought because the least voted video was the orchid mounting, but still a few of you guys did want to see it, that I would tag that on with this video as well. I am going to start off with the orchid just because the repotting is going to be a little bit messy, so I want to make sure that I get this stuff done and leave it all clean, and then I can get dirty and start repotting my plants. So the orchid that I'm going to be mounting today is this Oh, I think it has a new name, but the old name for it was the Neophinetia falcata. This might be Veranda or something like that now. I'll have the name on the screen, but this is it here. And I'll also have a picture right here of what the blooms look like. I don't believe that this is blooming size, but when it does bloom, the blooms are very beautiful. So that is the reason that I purchased this one. I did see the blooms and I was like, okay, I gotta have it and it's cute. So basically what I'm going to be doing is taking this piece of bark, I guess it's a piece of wood, driftwood, and I'm going to be unpotting this, taking it out of soil. So I'm going to be using sphagnum moss to mount this and I'm going to use some fishing wire to keep that in place. But I think the first thing that we need to do to start off is to unpot, ooh, is to unpot the orchid itself. So like always, I'm just going to squeeze the pot a little bit. That gets it off quite nicely. And then I'm just going to release all of the soil really gently though. That root was slightly damaged, so I just took it off. So this is great because this was quite dry. So it's making it really, really easy for me to just take off the soil here. It's just falling off. Look at that. I'm just gonna take a second to go rinse the roots off a little bit. I don't want too much dirt in there, but then I will be right back. All right guys, so this little dude is all cleaned off. I'm really happy with the way that this is looking and the roots look quite healthy. There's a little bit of, I don't even think rot, it just looked like a little bit of damage to the roots. So I just kind of snipped anything that looked unhealthy off. This is what we have though. I'm really, really happy and I'm excited. <laughs> I think that I'm going to do it this way because it actually does kind of sit if it's leaned against something, it'll sit nicely like that. So before I take this bag out, I'm just going to get my fishing wire ready because it's a little bit difficult to secure it without that. And I'm just using eight pound fishing wire. Doesn't need to be strong. We're not catching any fish. All right. So I have that prepared. I also have my sphagnum moss here, which I'm just going to dampen a little bit. Amazing. And so I did watch a video on this. I think it was from Brad's 
greenhouse. I will tag the video down below. He basically made a little orchid sandwich with the sphagnum moss. It's really there to help keep the moisture in. So here is my little sphagnum burrito. By the way, this is not an instructional video. I always try to be as instructional as possible, but I'm definitely not an expert. Um, I don't know what angle I want this on. So I think this is kind of how I'm gonna keep it with just a little bit of the bark or the wood on top so that you get a kind of natural look. And then I'm gonna start wrapping this piece in, or the, the sphagnum here in fishing wire. So it's looking really, really good so far. I'm really happy with it. I'm just gonna add a little bit more sphagnum moss. Just so you guys know, it can be a really tricky way to maintain your orchids if you don't have higher humidity because the sphagnum will dry out quite quickly. I do have at least 60% humidity at all times, so I am able to manage that. But if I do see any bit of this declining, I will definitely not hesitate to put it back into soil. So I'm just gonna secure it on the back here and tie it in a knot. I might actually go in afterwards with some hot glue and just secure that a little bit extra, but I am loving this. It looks so cute. Okay, I have zero regrets. This looks so cute and I'm so excited to display this. It looks so natural, which is something that I really, really like the look of. It's kind of one of the reasons that, I mean, I do like LECA. I really, really like LECA, but I do love soil because it really feels like you're bringing yourself back to nature, where LECA does feel a little bit more scientific and a little bit less natural. Here is another close-up of it. The back does look a little bit messy, but what are you gonna do? But there it is. It should be happy here for a good amount of time. If it does outgrow this, I'll just find another piece of, of wood as long as it's staying happy on here. But I'm very happy that I was able to try this out. And now we can just get on to repotting some of my Hoyas. So the first Hoya that I'm going to be moving back into soil is this Hoya, actually this one didn't have roots. So this has never been in soil. It has just grown its roots in Lekka, but this is my Hoya Australis Albo Marginata. You can see the roots in there, I don't know if you can, but they are outgrowing this very quickly. So I'm just gonna put it into a little terracotta pot. Nothing huge, I just, I don't know. I'm not feeling this one in Lekka, so I'm sorry I don't have a great explanation as to why I'm moving them back. So I'm just gonna dump the Lekka out and then I will show you guys the soil mixture that I use and we'll get repotting. So I'm just gonna put the Lekka back into here. So you can see the roots here. I'm going to have to be very careful taking these off so I don't rip off any roots, but they look fantastic. I'm just gonna leave these two Lekka balls in there. It's not a huge deal, but I don't wanna rip off these juicy large roots. So I'm just going to kind of pot it in with the plant, which isn't isn't bad at all. So this is my soil mixture. Honestly, all that it is is, oh, I mean, I say all, but <laughs> it's about 30 to 40% peat moss, then about 30% perlite, 
and 30% bark and 10% charcoal, I think. <laughs> but that works really, really well for most of my plant. Other than plants that really, really like to maintain moisture. So I'm just putting a small layer at the bottom of the pot, about an inch deep. And then I'm gonna place this guy in here and just fill around. I'm making such a mess, but you know, what are you gonna do? It's soil. All right guys, so the first plant here, the Albo Marginata uh, Hoya Australis is all done. Next up, we are doing my Hoya Incrusata Moonshine. So again, we'll just put some Lekka in here, or the Lekka. So here are the roots on the Incrustata. I'm gonna to try to find a small pot for this one. So I've got this little terracotta pot that will just do fine. Again, what I wanna do is just fill up the bottom a little bit, plop it in there, and fill her up. All right, this guy is also all done. Next up is gonna be my Hoya Incrusata. This is just the regular one, not variegated. It's gonna go into one of these clear pots. And this is actually two different cuttings. I, well, it was one and then I chopped it and made it two. This is not super easy. They really like to cling on to the LECA. It's hard to take it off without ripping off a lot of roots, which is unfortunate, but luckily they do have quite substantial root systems, so losing a few pieces of the roots won't be detrimental. Wow, the roots on this one are nuts. These roots are very strong though, especially the older Lekka roots. So the rest of these Lekka balls are going to stay because they are kind of glued in there. <laughs> I feel so gross. I'm so sweaty because it's so hot outside and now I'm getting dirt all over me. I'm definitely going to have to shower after this. <laughs> I think there's just been like a communal heat wave everywhere around the world right now. There we go. So the last guy I'm going to repot is this Hoya Obovada reverse variegation. So let's do that. Okay, so the rest of this definitely is not coming off without ripping off most of these roots. So we will just plant it like this. All right. We'll just start filling around. All right guys, that is her, looking good. That's going to be it for repotting my Hoyas. All right guys, that is going to be it for me. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you watched all the way through. If you did watch all the way through, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below, and also leaving a comment telling me how many plants you have in LECA, if any, and if you have ever considered transferring them back to soil. I also really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing an orchid on my channel. <laughs> I know I've shown jewel orchids before, but this is the first real sort of orchid that I've had, and they are kind of intriguing me. I'm not super into the Phalaenopsis, or phal Phalaenopsis, yeah. Not super into those, but I do like the more unique ones with cool foliage, so that's gonna be it for me though, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!